In this video, I will share my digital organizer blueprint, which I use to organize my knowledge management system and show you how I implemented it in Obsidian. I've read through books, watched videos, and tried out many PKM tools to list five concepts you must implement to get the best out of your system. Sharing it with you will boost your knowledge help you manage your time efficiently and ensure you achieve your daily objectives. The Digital Organizer Blueprint is in three parts. The first part is the overview, which covers accessing your most needed files. The second section is folders. Here we explore several methods to structure your folders and share how I use them in Obsidian. The final section covers how I structure files and how you can use them to connect notes to create ideas. Let's get started with the concept of table of contents. A table of contents can be incredibly helpful in organizing and navigating a personal knowledge system. It has helped me deal with complex research projects. Managing large-scale research projects for YouTube videos involves multiple topics and sources. A TOC can quickly help locate specific information and understand how different parts of the research connect. For learning new and complex subjects for IT qualifications, a TOC can help systematically progress through the material, ensuring that foundation concepts are understood before moving on to more advanced topics. In some personal knowledge systems, I use daily planning to help me achieve my daily goals. A TOC has helped me quickly navigate to different dates or categories like goals, daily tasks and reflections, enabling me to focus on my goal. TOC can come in many different forms. Mind map, dashboard, map of contents, daily notes, or weekly notes. In Obsidian, I've chosen a dashboard approach. Mine has different sections for covering my notes. The first part has buttons to activate note templates. The second part lists tasks I must complete and anything in my inbox to process. More details on that later. The next section covers important notes that I'm working on or need quick access to. Finally, I have a section to list out the most recent files. Whichever way you implement your table of contents, focus on easy access and maintainability. Next, let's see how I implement the popular getting things done approach to PKM. The getting things done in bots is a task management method. A PKM serves as a collection point for all incoming information before it's processed and organized. I found it helpful in these scenarios. The inbox serves as a quick dumping ground for ideas, thoughts, and sudden insights. The inbox ensures this information is captured immediately and can be revisited later for further development or integration into ongoing projects. Notes and key takeaways are placed in the inbox after meetings or lectures. Inbox keeps track of follow-up actions, questions, or further research points that need to be addressed. When conducting research, especially on complex topics, I use the inbox to store interesting findings references or data that might not be immediately relevant. In Obsidian, I've created an inbox folder to store notes in. When I process the files, I decide if they're worth keeping or if I should delete them. I also add in tasks to remind me to process these notes. Remember to like this video if you have found it helpful. Let's look at where files get moved once in the inbox. This is where the PARA system comes into play. The PARA method, which stands for Projects, Areas, Resources and Archives, is the method I use the most. Created by Tiago Fonte and covered in his second brain book, it helps categorize information for better accessibility and efficiency. I found the PARA method helpful in helping in the following scenarios. PARA neatly segments each project under its own category. This allows focused work on one project at a time, without the distraction of unrelated information from other projects. The areas component of PARA is ideal for long-term goals that aren't project specific. It helps maintain a clear view of ongoing commitments and areas of continuous development, such as career growth, personal health, or education. When researching or studying, the method allows for categorization of learning materials and reference notes, making it easy to find and refer back to essential resources for different topics. In Obsidian, I created four folders. The numbers in front of the folder help me order the folders correctly. I would have the project I'm working on in the project folder with a subfolder for each project. In area, I would have folders that covered goals or any topics related to all the projects or responsibilities that I have. If this were a YouTube YouTube PKMS, it would have a folder for accounting or my YouTube network. In resource, I would store my templates and research based on the Settlecaston method. In each of these scenarios, the PARA method enhances the structure and usability of a PKMS, making it easier to access, retrieve, and utilize information effectively. But what about the files themselves? What are the essential organization methods? 
Tags and metadata play a vital role in enhancing the organization, retrieval and management of information in a personal knowledge management system. I use these to help me with these scenarios. Tags and metadata let me link related information stored in different categories or sections of a PKMS. For example, a note tagged with health and research could easily be found while browsing your health related data or research project note. By assigning relevant tags and metadata to your notes, you can quickly retrieve specific information using search functions. This is particularly useful in large PKM systems where locating specific information could be time consuming. Tags like in progress, completed or pending review can help you instantly understand your current state of your notes in your PKMS. In Obsidian, I use tags to link different topics and subtopics together. When developing an idea, I can use data view to search related topics to develop my idea. I use metadata to capture the status of a note to see if it needs to be worked on later on. Please subscribe if you'd like more techniques, tools and hacks for building your personal knowledge management system. Let's look at the final method for organizing your notes. Cross-linking involves creating links between related pieces of information. Doing this will help connecting related ideas across different topics. Cross-linking allows you to navigate between these thoughts easily if you're working on multiple topics with overlapping ideas or concepts. This is especially useful for recognizing patterns and forming new insights from different work areas. When studying or researching complex subjects, cross-linking helps in building a web of knowledge. Using the Zettelkasten approach, I can cross-link related notes, articles, and study materials. I can create a more interactive and interconnected learning environment this approach mirrors how my brain stores and retrieves information, potentially improving memory retention and understanding. In these scenarios, cross-linking enhances the structure of a PKMS and lets you flow through your notes. Thanks for watching this video. Check out this video on mastering data view in Obsidian using practical snippets. Goodbye for now.